Before we get into this demonstration, stop, pause, do me a favor real quick. Go over to my other YouTube channel, Dangerous Criminals. Go over there and check that demonstration out when you get some time. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Peace and love. If you hood educated, I'm glad you made it. Allow me to unfold my knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from a hood brother's point of view to all of you here, there, and everywhere. Now check me out. Man, they done released the footage of the murder of FBG Duck. And I gotta tell y'all, it's it's a cold-blooded demonstration. I'm talking about um, how quick it happened. You know what I'm saying? Like how quick someone's life can be taken is just, it blows my mind. And the way that they did it, the way that it happened, broad daylight and how quick it happened. Now, y'all already know, I can't show y'all that type of video of a murder on my YouTube channel. But if you're into that type of stuff and you want to see the actual video, the whole video, I'm talking about everything. I'm going to talk about it, but if you need to see it, if you want to see it, click the link at the top in the comment section. It's going to have a link to my other web page, Too Raw for YouTube, Hood Educated. Go over there and get your Too Raw for YouTube uh, membership. And check out that video and other, you know, exclusive uh, content that I got over there on that channel. That's if you're into that type of stuff. If you're not, then hey, just I'm finna unfold the measure for you anyway. So according to what I just seen with my own two eyes, it was two cars. We had the Chrysler 300, then you had the other car. The other car is in the front behind the Chrysler 300. That car pulls up stops then here comes the chrysler 300 it pulls up it stops but before the chrysler 300 can stop the boys that was in the first car according to reports they're saying that muwap was in the first car they jumped out so fast y'all i'm talking about man i'm man they jumped out so fast and they was shooting they was on duck so fast that i don't even believe he just he even knew what was going on before it happened. It just, it happened just like that. And so while they running towards him, as they running towards him, they shooting. People are scattering everywhere, but they shooting that duck. And so he's trying to get away. And when he tries to get away, you know how two cars are parked? You know, the bumper right here and the bumper right there. Then there's like a little way that you can get through it in between the middle of the, right there. Duck tries to run in between the cars. Well, he does run in between the cars, but as he's running towards it, they shooting him all in the back, so he stumbles and he falls. When he stumbled and fall to try to get away and, and, and go around the car, it's another O-Block member right there waiting for him, shooting him, so he trapped. Cold-blooded. I'm talking about so soon as he come around in that little, the little way between the car and tried to get away from him, it's another old block. The guy that, one of the guys that jumped up out of the 300 is in play now. Not the two guys in the first car, but now it's somebody in the Chrysler 300 that's in play now. And that person is standing over Duck as he's like crouching over and shooting him. While he's shooting him, the woman... Man, I, this sister right here, I got to give it to her. Wherever you at, sister, I'm talking about, man, I'm t gangster. I'm talking about really put her life on the line. While dude is standing over ducks shooting him, she popped the door open. Damn near hit the man. Popped the door open and then she busting out the car. 
gangster. I'm, man, sister, whew. I'm talking about, she really tried to save that man's life. And then, you know, once she popped the door open, I guess the guy that was shooting him realized, like, wait, she's shooting at me. And then he started shooting at her. Jump back in the car. The guys in the Chrysler 300 jumped back in the car quicker because the other guys in the other car had to run all the way back, and then they got in the car. I'm talking about, y'all, it was so quick. I'm talking about, man, it, it was so quick. It didn't take long. It did not take long. Now, the crazy part about the whole thing is this right here. When the Chrysler 300 make it back to O Block, tell me why a police car is trailing them. As soon as they pulled over in O Block, it's a police car right behind them, and he appears as if he about to pull them over. Like, he heard what happened downtown, and he on they ass, excuse me, but he is on them, on them. Man, they pulled over in Old Block. They all jumped up out the car. And when they jumped up out the car, let me tell y'all what the police did. The police jumped up out the car too. But then stopped. Like something like was telling him like get back in the car. So the man stopped in his tracks. Now y'all know when the police pull behind you like that and they jump out the car, it's on. Get on the ground, everybody. No. Soon as they jumped out the car, the police opened the door, jumped out, and then got back in the car. They steady scattering, and then you'll see video footage. Once they get out of sight, they start running. The police car calmly backed up and left them alone. I'm talking about he had them right after the murder. And when they jumped out of the car, they didn't have them guns on them or nothing like that. They probably left those guns in the car because once they seen the police was behind them, I'm already knowing. They like, man, somebody seen us. We caught. We just got done killing somebody, shooting this man up. And now a police car trailing us right behind us. Nope. The police car just backed up and left them alone. And that makes me wonder, like, I think about that. Now that I just think that, I'm like, why would he do that? He had to hear the reports, you know, hey, it was this type of car, this type of something. Because he was on them, and then he just stopped. I don't know if, once he said, look, I'm on these guys, I got the car right here. I don't know if the FBI was already on them and was like, no, -uh, leave them alone. We got it already. We don't need the state messing up our case. We don't need y'all doing nothing. We've been watching these boys. We already got everything that we need. We got it on video and everything. Go on about y'all business. Leave it alone. That's the only thing that I can think of because why else would this police just stop and then leave? Usually when the police is on you like that, they're going to call for backup. Hey, look, I got the car right here. And I just seen this dude, this dude, that dude jump out the car. I need some backup. The police ain't, I'm talking about, didn't come out with no gun or nothing. The man, y'all, look, y'all see that video? That man opened up his car door and then closed it. Got out the car door. And then got, got back in the car, closed the door, and just left. I'm talking about no type of uh, law enforcement, period. Nothing. Now, let me tell y'all something about this video that just blows me um after watching the video i understand now why possibly that they all went to trial or as far as the video footage because y'all um i know how muwap look carlos look see thing see murder Kenny Mac, Zell. I know how these guys look just from, you know, viewing them in pictures and stuff like that. When I tell y'all that by watching the video footage of the murder of FBG Duck, rest in peace to that brother, uh, them uh, running out the car, getting in the car, them running up the stairs, because we got that footage too, them running up the stairs in O Block and all that old type of stuff, running from the police and all that. I cannot say with 100% accuracy 
that I can identify now one of the old block six. Now one of them. I got to be 100. When I watch that video, I can't identify who Muwap is. I can't identify who Kenny Mac is, to Carlos, C Thang, C Murder. I can't identify none of them. And I know how they look. I done seen they pictures before. I know how they look. I can't identify none of them. With them running in the building after they got the call. The man appeared, it's a silhouette. The man, he looks like Muwap, but I can get on the stand and put my hand on the Bible and say 100%, that's Muwap right there. I can't do that because I just can't. And I, I wouldn't be able to pretend to do that, right? So that right there kind of tells me why they probably, you know, took it to trial on the video for this part of the whole thing. You know what I mean? Because the jury probably looking at it like, man, like, unless... Unless, because we're dealing with the FBI here. Now, the video that we get is just the video. You can still see everything going down, but it's just video. But we also understand that the FBI can enhance video footage, right? We also understand that the FBI can enhance uh, still photos. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know if any of that happened during the trial where the FBI had to enhance and, and get those close photos and say, look, that's move up and put their pictures, you know, put their pictures side to side by each other and stuff like that. I don't know if that's what happened. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't in the trial. But however, for me just looking at what I seen, you can see what's happening. You can see what's going on. But you would have to know them to identify them, in other words, right? Like, for an example, uh, some of us, we know our loved ones so much that without us seeing them, we know they walk. You know what I'm saying? We can just see, like, okay, that's that's my little brother walk right there. That's him on the way. I can't see him, you know, but his silhouette and his, his, his mannerism, his movements, you know what I'm saying, say, that's my little brother. That's my big brother. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's my wife right there. You know, I can tell how she walked. I can tell how that thing just be shaking and glaking. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, we we know like that. And so, that's what makes me think that that's why it was so important in the case to have people that can identify them. You see what I'm saying? That's why they was having uh, Trenches News, uh, the security guards that worked there in the old block. Uh, 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 what to Carlos Child's mother or, or Kenny Mac Child's mother? I think that's why they had them in the trial, pointing them out like that's 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 Muwa, that's C thing, that's C murder. You know what I'm saying? Because you barely can see them. But again, we dealing with the FBI. They gotta have that 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 you know they they can enhance you know videos and, and stuff like that. Uh. Allow me to say this right here, man, because I'm, I'm talking about, man, we be doing each other dirty, bro. Man, the way they did that brother right there, man, man, we, we be dogging each other, man. I'm talking about, and the sad part about it is like, man, these young brothers out here so wild, but they using that warrior energy for the wrong thing. Like y'all using y'all warrior energy against each other when there's a real enemy out there for y'all to be being a warrior against for real instead of being a warrior against each other you see what i'm saying like i'm talking about it's too much going on in this world where people are really harming our people doing bad things to our people for us to be trying to harm each other the way that we do the way that they Man, you don't do no, man. The way that they walked down on Duck like that and stood over him, I'm talking about, and rushed him, it was like, like they hated him or something. And from my understanding, Duck ain't never did nothing to nobody in O Block. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. Like, Duck ain't never shot, killed, probably fought a couple of them or something like that, but he ain't never draw no blood like that. Yeah, he talked crazy. Look. Duck talk crazy on that microphone. 
Duck talk. I'm talking about man, clever with his words. I make you mad at him the way he talk on that microphone. I give him that. And like they say, sometimes man, words cut way harder than a physical cut. You understand what I'm saying? Words can man, them low blows. Those right there hurt harder than the actual low blow. So the way that they did that, brother, it they it was like hate. Because you just don't do that to somebody. You just don't. I'm talking about. And then risk your life. Broad daylight. It's people everywhere. Y'all, Yo, you see people on bikes. Everything. Cars driving past. Everything. The way that they jumped out. Crashed out like that. Crazy. Crazy. Dumb and stupid. But allow me to say this. We got to stop all this type of madness, bro. We got to. At some point, man, somebody got to say, hey, look. That's why it, it, it makes me upset that they took a lot of the elites and, and board members and governors and regents and generals and, you know, muftis and, you know what I'm saying, sultans and all this old type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? L, you know, all these type of leaders that would keep these young boys in check. You see what I'm saying? Like, although I don't agree with the game banging and all that, but back then, like, the elites, the five-star university elites, chiefs, they wouldn't have allowed us. Where y'all finna go, brother? We finna go put some work in on, on somebody downtown. No, who, what? Brother, is y'all crazy? Man, get, give me them good. Come here. No, y'all ain't finna throw y'all life, your life away like that. Like they had some type of structure, some type of order. You know what I mean? And when they got rid of all them chiefs and all them leaders and stuff like that, now look what we got. These young boys is just going wow, killing anywhere, everywhere. Like they just really don't care. Like I always tell you, brothers and sisters. You don't have to go out in the hood and, and, and preach and say, hey, we need to stop the violence. Y'all got to stop all the killing. Stop the... You ain't got to do all that. Just get your nephews. Get your sons. Get your little brothers. Start at home. Save his life. Save their life. Get your cousins. Hey, man, look, come on. Y'all come with me, bro. I see what y'all doing. Y'all trying to go over there and mess with them boys. Yeah, them boys finna go to jail or they finna be dead. Come here. Come on. Get them. You ain't got to do it for everybody else. Because these kids that's out here doing all this killing and, and doing all this reckless stuff like these brothers just did to FBG Duck, they got to have some type of uncles, big brothers, big cousins, fathers, grandfathers. So start with your family members. You ain't got to go. I wouldn't encourage you to go deal with no strangers because these boys are so crazy. You go out there try to help them. Hey, man, y'all need to stop the gun violence. They stick you up, hit you with the pistol. They might kill you for telling them to do something right. So start with your family. Start with the ones that you know that you can trust, ones that look up to you, ones that you can really talk to and speak that life into them. Yeah. Get at them fix them and when you do that then you help building the community why because once other brothers see that hey man he got his son he got his nephews he got his little cousin he got they got them together brother how you do that man i just pulled them and i did this and told them i love them and this that and the other start taking them to do things and had them you know on the schedule to do things and stuff like that because you got to give you got to give these kids something to do you can't just let them sit there, get high, smoke weed, and play the game all day. They got to get active. They got to do something. And if gang banging is the only thing that they can do and hanging with gangs and shooting and killing and all that, then they feel like they're doing something. Those are their activities. Give them something to do. Put them on the schedule. Get them a job. Do something that can occupy their time so they won't have that idle time to just do all this bullshit that they out here doing. 
So once again, brothers and sisters, you ain't got to go out there and risk your life talking to some strange kids that you don't know. I wouldn't encourage that. But start at home. This hood educated, not lame related. Peace and love and y'all take care of yourself out there. If I said anything that caused you to think, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And if you're feeling generous, please make a small donation to the channel. Peace and love.